Good afternoon, Mr. Christopher. Good afternoon, Mrs. Potter. This is a beautiful spot up above Canes Lake. Well, we think so, too. Thank you very much. Um, now, about this book, the a team that couldn't lose. Um, is there any of this book true? No, the, uh, the, the story of the team that couldn't lose is not true at all, although some of the characters might be based on people that I do know, that's all. But I wanted to write something that's funny, a different kind of a football story, and I came up with this. Well, it's a good one, and Thank you. Uh, we like it. Are the char any of the characters taken from real life? Uh, well, the, some of the stories, some of the characters that I write about uh, are based on some people I know, but actually they are composite characters. None of the people I write about are real, but there are some characteristics of some of them that are real. For instance, uh, Miss Pearson, the lady who didn't like sports. Well, Mrs. Pearson just happens to be someone who might be a composite of uh, people that I do know, but uh, I dreamed her up, and she seems to be the character I really wanted for that particular part. Now, why do you use characters like Dinty, who suffered from asthma? Well, just to, uh, I use Dinty in this, who suffered from asthma, because it is something that is true to life in a way, although the story might be humorous in a way, and a little bit fantasy probably. Still, the characters are real to me. They're, they're not from true life, but their problems are real, and after all, children do get asthma. And sometimes there are boys that uh, are very much interested in sports who have some problem yes, like this. Yes, that, that's true. Now, for example, Dinty also likes to play piano, and uh, I know some boys who like to do the same things that Dinty does mm -hmm. and are unable to play the sports in themselves and therefore become perhaps coaches or managers. Where do you get the names for your teams, like the Cubans and the Duck Bills and the team that couldn't lose? Well, I... I take a, uh, I take a lot of time in uh, thinking up these names. Actually, there are many, many leagues throughout the country, and uh, all leagues do have such names. And uh, well, I just dream them up and hope that uh, they would fit actually the teams. You live by Cayuga well, Lake, is that the That is true. We live near the Cuga Lake, and uh, I just thought uh, it would be nice to uh, use perhaps some of the names of places around here in my stories. Mm -hmm. The diagrams of the plays are very uh, clear, and the boys say they can use these in their own games. Uh, well, this is uh, good to hear, because I suspected once the diagrams were in this particular book, uh, the team that couldn't lose, that some of the kids might try it out. Actually, uh, these have been plays that were used a long time ago. I just changed them a little bit, and I'm glad to hear that they have used them. They're, uh, they're really thrilled to be able to, uh, to get them and have them work out so That's well. That's fine. Now, in this book, The Team That Couldn't Lose, you tell a great deal about the problems that the boys have and even their thoughts while they're playing the game. Now, why do you write your stories in this way? Well, because I really get into my character when I write, and uh, I'm very, very sincere about my writing. Uh, I've had the boys say that... Uh, uh, they like sports stories, but they don't like to read long descriptions yes. of games, just yes. uh, descriptions alone. Yes, that's true. I don't like to write uh, a detail-by-detail detail description of my games either, because I think that it would be boring to me, and if it's boring to me, it certainly will be to the reader. So I've got to have a, a rounded-out story, not only about the game itself, but uh, some other things that the kids do, something exciting, because I know that I like excitement, and I'm sure that youngsters who read the books expect this and would enjoy it, too. I imagine that they probably wouldn't go back to reading uh, your books, uh, one book after another, the way they do with it. We're just <laughs> <laughs> descriptions. That's now, right. Uh, you write about many sports. Do you have a favorite sport? Well, I used to play uh, baseball and football and basketball. I played more baseball than anything else. But actually, I think that I prefer writing football stories. Seems to me it's a little bit more fun. There's a little bit of strategy you can use there, but uh, there's a little edge that I have uh, on football, writing football instead of the other two. Oh. Yeah. Now, it says on the cover of your book that you have three sons. Do they play in these sports? Well, our two oldest sons, uh, who uh, are now out of high school, have played them, yes. They played football, basketball, and baseball. 
But our youngest son, who was 12, uh, hasn't been exposed to baseball or any of the sports as the oldest two. Therefore, he doesn't really care to play sports. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he, he likes wrestling, though, and that's about the only thing. Mm -hmm. And you haven't written a book about wrestling either, have no, you? No, I haven't. I haven't written any stories about wrestling. Probably won't for a long time. Um, now, the boys uh, like hockey, and there aren't very many books on hockey. Now, you did write one, Wingman um, on Ice. Wingman on Ice. I wrote that, yes, uh, oh, about three years ago. Now, the pictures in the Wingman on Ice are very real, as they are in all of your books that are illustrated by Foster Cadell. Uh, can you tell the illustrator... Uh, how you want these pictures done? No, I have nothing to do with telling the illustrator anything. Because as far as that goes, the illustrator is first selected by the publishing company. Uh, but uh, Foster Cadell is, I'm very happy to have had him in my books, although he's not going to do any more, mm -hmm. I'm sorry to say. He's been quite busy and he can't. But uh, he told me that for Wingman on Ice, he rented suits, the uniforms, and he always has youngsters come to model for him. So he had to rent these uniforms and make sure, which he always does, that the illustrations are very authentic. And this is good. Now, some of the terms that you use in your books are unusual. Uh, would you explain what you mean by a bingo? A bingo in baseball is a term that simply means a, a hit. Getting a safe hit is a bingo. Of course, there's a lot of terminology in all kinds of sports. And having played sports, uh, I'm quite familiar with them. And, of course, there's been some new ones that have cropped up, and I tagged these also. And I think that this is another reason why the, the sports books are so popular with the youngsters, is because I do use these terms. Well, then you use another one, a glass arm. Oh, the glass arm, in the catcher with a glass arm, it's an intriguing title, and I'm very happy that I dreamed that one up. But it simply means that the catcher has a very poor throwing arm, and this is quite common. And uh, the the term glass arm used to be quite popular. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether it's as popular now as it used to be, but it simply means a poor throwing arm. Well, now how about bobble the grounder? Well, when that person bobbles a grounder, it simply means that he fumbles the ball, oh. that he that he missed the the ground ball that was hit to him, mm -hmm. or you know, yeah. if he's a shortstop, mm -hmm. it usually happens. Well, with any infielder particularly. If he bobbles the ball, he misses it. Mm -hmm. Well, now, you did mention that you have, you have played uh, baseball and football? I played uh, baseball, football, and basketball. Uh, I played mostly baseball, though, in high school, and then a lot of semi-pro after my graduation from high school. And I had a brief stint in professional baseball. At that time, we called it Class C ball. Mm -hmm. They don't have Class C ball anymore. I played... Uh, football in high school uh, when I was a senior, and then after I graduated, I played basketball. Uh, all the boys and uh, many of the girls who like sports uh, read your books and are always looking forward to the new one. Uh, now, your newest one, the year that Mom won the pennant, has got quite a different idea in it. Did you know a mom who coached a boys' well, team? <laughs> this is this is a good question. Actually, uh, there are some mothers that I'm, I know that have uh, helped their uh, husbands uh, on a, you know, uh -huh. coaching a team. Actually, they probably were on the husband's side and so on and trying to give their husband some advice just like uh, moms usually do. But uh, I don't know of anyone who uh, took the team over herself. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, though, that this has happened because I've read of such mothers in newspapers. I don't know anyone personally, but this has happened, I know. But I thought it would be a lot of fun to write a story about a mom who took over a team, and especially... Uh, come through in winning uh, the pennant, and this is what that story is about. I enjoyed writing it, and I hope that uh, readers will enjoy it. Uh, probably that's why we enjoy them so much. Is <laughs> this comes through? <laughs> we know you must have enjoyed it uh, from the very book that comes out. Now, besides your sports books, you've also written t three mysteries. Yes, the um, the first one was the mystery on Crabapple Hill, then the mystery at Monkey Run. And then the mystery on the fugitive house, and that last one came out last year. And, uh, well, I like mysteries. Actually, my very first book that was published was a mystery for grown-ups back in 1952. Mm -hmm. And all of my sports books, nearly all anyway, include some mystery in it. And I just simply thought, well, I would like to try a, a mystery story for young people. And Little Brown was interested, but they wanted that under a pen name. 
because, so that it wouldn't conflict with my sports stories. So it's yeah. Frederick Martin yeah. for my mysteries. Your sports stories have mysteries in them, and in reverse, your mystery stories have sports in them. <laughs> well, that's true, yes. They have a little sports in it, not much. Uh, I think that's interesting uh, that way you have worked these into uh, some of your books. For instance, the skateboard in uh, yes. one of your uh, books. Yes, yeah, or the plate. Not yeah. that the plate had skateboarding in there, mm -hmm. yes. Well, I try to, of course, keep up with with today. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps if some other sport turns up in the meantime, I'll try to introduce that into mm -hmm. a, one of the sports. The skin diving, mm -hmm. and the, the mystery of uh, Monkey Run. Um, we have diving. lots of calls for skin diving mm -hmm. books. Yes, I enjoy nearly everything you can think about it, uh, as far as adventure is concerned, so I try to put all this in regardless whether stories are mysteries or sports. <laughs> How did you pick this pseudonym, by the way, or this pen name? The pen name, Frederick Martin. Well, that, I had more trouble picking the pen name than I did in actually picking names for my characters and my <laughs> stories. But I really, my name, it's, uh, my name, full name, is uh, Martin Matthew Frederick. So I just got it out of that. Oh, I see. Martin Matthew Frederick, so, and I got Frederick Martin out of that. It's nice to have enough names so you can <laughs> yes. not run out of huh? No. You also write a comic strip for me. I write uh, the Chuck White and his friends adventure series for the for the Treasure Chest magazine. The magazine is published in Dayton, Ohio, and comes out every two weeks, and it's uh, distributed in mainly in schools. And uh, I enjoy that. Chuck mm -hmm. White is an adventuresome boy. He gets into trouble a lot, and of course he admits to his own mistakes. He's 14 years old lives in a small town called Steel Town. Mm -hmm. I have an awful lot of fun writing this. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you do this? Do you write the uh, content I, first and then the pictures are drawing, drawn around? Yes, I write the uh, dialogue and the description for the illustrator. Oh. And uh, it's just something like probably scenario writing or playwriting. Mm -hmm. And I will write each panel, you see. And uh, then I would uh, submit this to the editor, Treasure Chest. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, in turn, naturally would go over it and uh, then probably make uh, several copies, and one is submitted to the uh, illustrator. This was actually my very first mm -hmm. attempt, and this started two years ago. And Chuck White actually has been running in that magazine for over 25 years. With different writers. With different writers, and I think I'm about the seventh or eighth writer. Well, now that's interesting, too, because the boys like the Hardy Boy book, uh -huh. and uh, they always want to know oh, who's Franklin Dixon, and uh, sometimes it's rather difficult to get them to understand that uh, Franklin Dixon has been many people, but in yes. this they let you use your own name yes. so they realize that there is a change. Now, you spoke about uh, magazine articles, which brings us to the point. How many books is it, is it that you have written? Uh, my 30th book has just been published. My 30th book was The Year Mom Won the Pennant, yes. And how many of those are for young people? Every one except my very first one. Oh. That means 29. 29 books, books were for young people, mm -hmm. yes. Now, do you have another book started? Well, there's another book coming out in the fall, and the title is The Basket Counts. It's a basketball story, and I was very, very pleased in writing this. Matter of fact, the idea was suggested by Little Brown's editors, and the main character is a Negro boy, and of course it's his problem, how he becomes suggested. Uh, how he adjusts himself in this community and how he regains friendship among the basketball players. And I've just sold a story. Matter of fact, uh, I'm just receiving my contract soon for a new one that will be coming out a year from now. Well, we'll be looking forward to them. And we do thank you. Well, thank you very much, Mrs. Potter. It's been enjoyable. <laughs>